From KTVU Fox 2 News, San Francisco mayoral candidates debate. And we can almost be sure that there are no adults in the room. There's not going to be any rationality. It's just going to be degrees of absolute insanity. But my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. It would help me a lot and it will cost you nothing. But if you wanted to help me even more and spend a little bit of money, go ahead and buy my book. New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. Tonight, the top five candidates running for mayor faced off about the biggest issues. And look at this, look at this little, look at this weirdo little mini Mike Bloomberg clone on the right. I mean, he's absolutely tiny. And that guy, I believe that's Aaron Peskin, who is completely, well, he's not delusional. He's evil, but nothing he says makes sense. Of course, he tries to sugarcoat it and pretend that, well, we just need a little bit more money. We need a little, you know, to, to hand out more stuff to the poor people, and that's going to fix everything. We need to reimagine downtown. And that's what they all say, London breed, right? I mean, she is absolutely terrible. I used to think she was one of the most corrupt politicians in the country, but she's not even close. That's how bad this has gotten. It's facing the city. I've gone above and beyond to provide support for mental health, to provide support for teacher retention. My plan for public safety, I believe we need a new police chief. And I think this is the guy, Mark Farrell, and maybe they'll get to it, but I believe this is the guy who is the most sane. And he was interim mayor, I believe, when Chinatown gangster Ed Lee died in a Safeway before they put in London Breed. And he is not... Um, you know, he's not rational by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he is the least crazy on the panel. I believe we need to restore the budget of our police department. We need to transform how we think about downtown. It needs to be a 24-7 community. I'll make it my mission to prevent more homelessness before... Yes, this guy. Absolutely despicable. He's like San Francisco's Bernie Sanders, but even worse almost. And oh, I'm gonna make it my mission. No, you're not, bro. You're only going to money launder and scheme and plot. What happens? We want to be able to make sure that teachers, nurses, janitors, firefighters can live in this city and thrive in this city. From homelessness to the drug crisis, the public school system and city hall corruption, the five mayoral candidates in San Francisco address some of the biggest concerns for the future of the city. Good evening. I'm and I also think that the, this, this five person debate is just completely plastic. It's not even remotely believable, right? Like there's nothing authentic about any of these people. They're complete like cyborg reptilian robot people. I'm Julie Hayner. And I'm Mike Meeback. Tonight's marks the first time all five leading candidates hit the debate stage, making their pitch to the voters. Incumbent London Breed debated four challengers, including former San Francisco supervisor and mayor Mark Farrell, prominent philanthropist Daniel Lurie, as well as current supervisors Aaron Peskin and Asha Safai. The candidate speaking in front of a sold-out crowd at the Sydney Goldstein Theater. KTVU's Amber Lee joins us live tonight from the city. And I think, I think that Asha Safai guy is responsible for opening up the free market in the Bayview district that I'm sure is going to be profitable or no, not profitable at all, but efficient for months, years to come. With a breakdown of tonight's debate, Amber. Mike, we're outside the theater where the debate was held. It's only about two blocks from City Hall. Now, there was a bit of excitement and a little bit of heckling from the audience. But overall, the candidates appeared poised and prepared. The first San Francisco mayoral debate leading up to the November election took place before a sold-out audience of 1,700 at Sydney Goldstein Theater. The first topic of the debate was how to deal with downtown vacancies. We have a historic opportunity to purchase buildings and turn them into universities. We also have to invest in things that make neighborhoods great, like arts, libraries, culture, small businesses, and parks, things downtown has really never had. Converting. How is that possible? You can't talk about small businesses when they've all small businesses along with major corporation household name brands have all left. And now oh, we're going to bring it back. You killed it all on purpose. Some of those buildings downtown to housing, 
making downtown not just look, 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 look. i'm sorry but here we are once again london breed in these weird pastel batman villain suits right and this lady this lady's so despicable i just genuinely don't understand how anybody can look at this and take it seriously you can't put toothpaste back in the tube like i want to see what apparently voters see that like these people and for the record, I don't even think the hard left likes these people. Maybe Aaron Peskin, but he's none of it's popular. Nobody's paying attention, right? There's weed stores on every corner. The entire city has become an open-air drug market. And London Breed's entire thing in the past six or eight months has been, we're going to have a party. We're going to do first Thursdays in San Francisco. You're going to take your mind off how terrible everything is and just get drunk on the streets while there's bums self-vaccinating under the Bay Bridge retail but a place for all kinds of businesses and bringing more block parties and entertainment and excitement downtown. The moderators asked the candidates how they would handle the homeless and fentanyl crisis. As mayor, I will declare a fentanyl state of emergency. It will allow us to ask the state and federal government for additional funds. The candidates... Surprise, surprise. We need more money. When you could just deploy the cops and arrest these people. Tell them, hey, if these guys don't get off the street, we're going to arrest you. If you don't take the offer of hospitality or whatever, the shelters that we are offering you, then you are now a criminal and you are going to jail. But they, they would obviously never do that. We just need a little bit more money. We're going to declare an emergency and, and, and throw more money at the problem, which obviously is not going to go to the problem. It's just going to get filtered through bureaucrats all over the place gave their position on how they would improve public safety. As mayor, I will expand the community policing we have in District 3 to the rest of San Francisco. Public safety isn't just about police. It's about alternatives to policing as well. Yep, there you go. I don't know who she's pandering to with this. Oh, no, oh no it's not just police. We're going to get community policing, right? How? I guess so. You hate the police, but you're going to employ citizens to do what the cops might be able to do, but at a subpar level, and then for whatever reason, you like that? I mean, who's still left? Who's buying this? And having ambassadors and other resources and responses to calls for service in the city. But what's been missing has been the leadership and the investment to recruit. If you don't invest in the recruitment budget, you can't go out and get officers. We have to send a message to this country and to the world that you do not come to San Francisco to deal drugs, to do drugs, or to sleep on our streets. That's literally all they do. I mean, that's like 85% of what they do, right? All, all the tech bros that actually pay an arm and a leg to live in San Francisco, and they commute an hour to the South Bay. So this guy's completely wrong, and you have made it this way that all you, all people, they, they, bro, there's tape. You can roll the clips of people saying, yeah, well, I just come here. I know I'm from New Mexico, but they're going to pay me a couple hundred bucks a year to just get high and sleep on the street. If you're going to be homeless, it's pretty fucking easy here. I mean, if we're going to be realistic, they pay you to be homeless here. When you said that San Francisco pays people to be homeless, what did you mean by that? <laughs> you mean that literally? Yeah. I mean, I get 620 bucks a month, dude. From yeah, general money. assistance? Yeah. or? You, you, how was that hard to get? Fucking phone call, bro. A wow. fucking phone call. 200 food stamps and 620 bucks cash a month. Wow. Forget about it. Why wouldn't I do it? You know, it's fucking free money, dude. Yeah. This right now is, is literally by choice. Literally by choice. Like. And anybody who believes that any of these five people are going to stop it is completely delusional. And that's why I've said if they do everything right Yesterday, it would still take at least a decade to clean up. But of course, they don't want to clean up. And there's another story from the SF Standard that says, oh, San Francisco's business district or whatever might not come back till 2042, which by that, I mean, it's gone. It's already gone. And that's them admitting that it's com completely collapsed. And I assume they are somehow benefiting from this because it's a cudgel, right? You can always ask them, we need the, the state and federal government to give us more money that they're going to pretend they will throw down at the homeless people and create free communist grocery stores. 
At one point, Daniel Lurie called out former supervisor Mark Farrell when he was budget director for giving less funding to the police department than what then Mayor Ed Lee had requested. But a mayor has to stand by and, and support our public safety and our... So maybe this guy is a little bit more sane, but it's also just political posturing. I don't know, might be worth looking into all these people, except for London Breed, because I know way too much about her. But he, oh yeah, he... Bro, you guys all talked about defunding the police. You all talked about, oh, we need to do community policing. But for whatever reason, this guy is going after Farrell for not giving enough money to the cops. So on one hand, that could make me believe that Farrell is actually sane and was working within the bounds of the old administration uh, under Ed Lee, I believe. And now this guy is blaming him for not doing enough, but it's never going to be enough. We just saw right across the bridge in Oakland that it's always the the fault of the police. And that's happening all over the place. But this is an absolute clown car. And as we know, there are no adults in the room. First responders. Mark, do you want to respond to that? Absolutely. And I appreciate the question and the comments. And Daniel, this is where your inexperience shows. <laughs> you have not been part of the budget committee in City Hall. You have not been mayor of the city of San Francisco. There are competing priorities every single day. Before the debate, groups of supporters came out in front of the theater to campaign for their candidate. Voters won't have to wait long for the next debate. It's scheduled for June 17th at UC Law. Mike, Julie. And election day just five months away. Amber Lee, live tonight in San Francisco. Amber, thank you. And there were some lighthearted moments at tonight's debate as not all the questions covered serious topics. What is your favorite San Francisco tradition? Oh. My favorite San Francisco tradition, and I started it when I came here, was to ride the cable car. That's mm -hmm. a one to work. It's great. Nice. Mark. Visiting Alcatraz. Daniel. That's your favorite San Francisco <laughs> tradition. You are law and order. Uh, audience. <laughs> Uh, well, your time is I got, I got, I'm sorry. That I got, was... So they call him, oh, you are law and order. So again, I do think that that Mark Farrell is the most rational of this bunch. But that's not saying much. The bar is obviously really quite low. I go with opening day. Sorry? Giants opening Giants day. Giants opening day, okay. My Maybe. favorite San Francisco tradition is the San Francisco Juneteenth Festival on Fillmore Street. How, how... How was it so predictable that, of course, she's going to throw in something about, oh, the black community, oh, Juneteenth. Bro, Juneteenth started like three years ago. Nobody was doing that until I think Donald Trump held a rally on what people claimed was Juneteenth, and now it's a national holiday. But that just started, right? Like, that's under the Biden administration, and now she wants to protect. I mean, you think you're going to get enough black people to vote for you? But also, it's highly likely that voting is not even real in San Francisco. I mean, they also have... Ranked, ranked choice, which I think some people are calling rigged choice, of course. And that's a way to muddy the waters and make sure that we just are going to further usher in communism and nobody is going to get what they want. Nice. My favorite tradition is swimming from Alcatraz. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah, right, bro. All right, if you missed tonight's debate. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. And, um... I think the debate itself is like two hours. It's not, well, maybe it's worth watching the entire thing. But, I mean, none of these people are going to offer any solutions. That ship sailed, right? As much as you, oh, well, I'm going to get in and I'm going to fix this problem. I'm going to fix that problem. They're not going to do anything. It's only a matter of which one of these five corrupt weasels are going to be able to line their pockets as they further destroy San Francisco.